Okay. No. Oh, it's not. Good afternoon. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Welcome everyone to the September 12, 2019 meeting of the City County Planning Board. Would you please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Our first order of business today will be the consent agenda. Today's meeting is being broadcast live on TV 13 and will be rebroadcast re at 10 a.m. Friday morning and again at 4 p.m. <coughs> Sunday afternoon. The consent agenda are items which the petitioner is requesting withdrawal or continuance or items for which staff has recommended approval and no one has signed up to speak in opposition. For all public hearings, each side will have a total of 12 minutes. There will be no rebuttal period. Once the public hearing is closed and the board goes into work session, no one is permitted to speak unless a planning board member asks them a question. For general use district zoning requests, the planning board must consider the full range of uses allowed in the zoning district being requested. Petitioner may not refer to a specific use for the property. For special use district zoning requests, however, the petitioner must identify the intended use or uses of the site and give specific details on how the site will be developed. Items under Section B of the agenda will require final action by the appropriate elected body, either the City Council or County Commissioners. As such, votes taken by the Planning Board concerning these items are recommendations that will be considered by the elected bodies during their review of the request. Before addressing the Planning Board today, we will need your name, address, and zip code for the record. The first item of business is the approval of the minutes of the August 8th and August 22nd meetings. Are there any additions or corrections? Move approval. Approve a motion by Mr. Lamb. Second. Second by Mr. Bryant. All those in favor, any further discussion first? All those in favor? Oppose the same sign, that's unanimous. Uh, Mr. Corley, I now call on you for the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the first item, B1, was uh, automatically withdrawn, so the first item on the consent agenda is B2, which is case W2936. It is a final development plan and master plan amendment for property zone PBS2 phase. The final development plan and the master plan amendment will both actually be approved by the city council. Uh, the site is about 4.7 acres and is bounded by 2nd Street, First Street and Broad Street across from the BB&T ballpark. This is a view of the subject property taken from Green Street looking northwest towards Second Street um, where the site has significant street frontage. This is taken from the same spot but more to the west looking at the intersection of West First Street and Peter Street Parkway and Second Street. And then this is another photo of the site taken looking toward the north east looking at the intersection of Broad Street and 2nd Street. And then this is another photo looking southward along Broad Street where the property again has significant frontage. This is the existing master plan which was established in 2016. It was the result of a condition of the original approval of the PBS two-phase zoning that was anchored by bb and Ballpark in 2007. Back then, 28.35 acres were rezoned to allow the ballpark and a larger mixed-use development, which you see in this master plan area. Uh, one condition was to bring forth a master plan during approval process of the second phase of development, which is what this is. Um, and another condition was to make up for the loss of Watkins Street Park by dedicating about 0.6 acre to the city for public park. Um, Again, I've highlighted in yellow the subject property on the existing master plan. It shows a lot of non-residential uses and surface parking kind of facing Broad Street. This is the proposed site plan, which is two five-story buildings or four and five-story buildings containing 277 multifamily units. They are connected by a five-level parking deck. Uh, the total development, again, is about 4.7 acres and it has a presence on three major and highly visible intersections. Um, this intersection of Peters Creek and 2nd and 1st Street, this intersection up here of 2nd and Broad, and this intersection down here of 1st Street and Broad Street. 
This is a perspective drawing that was proposed by the developer. This is the view from um, Peaches Creek Parkway, the intersection of Peaches Creek Parkway and 2nd Street and 1st Street, um, looking to the north. These are the elevations that were submitted by the petitioner. Um, the 2nd Street elevation was of particular significance to the planning staff because of the parking deck. This is the proposed master plan. Um, it doesn't show any significant changes to the existing master plan other than the development on the subject property um, where instead of showing a bunch of non-residential development, it now shows the proposed development of multifamily and a dedicated park area of approximately 0.6 acres on the northern end. So just to recap, some important elements of the proposed site plan is this 0.6 acre dedication to the city for parkland. The um, potential closure of this portion of Brookstown Avenue, which would be necessary for this particular development to go forward. That is a separate action by the city council um, that obviously if the city council doesn't approve this closure, then this proposal can't go forward as, as it is. Um, that park dedication has a 30-foot wide easement going across it that includes a 10-foot um, multimodal facility to replace the foot, the pedestrian and bicycle traffic from Brookstown Avenue to traverse that site through the city parkland. And then the uh, development also includes an enhanced streetscape with eight foot sidewalks all the way around and large variety of street trees planted in wells along uh, West First Street and then inside of a planting area um, where, where there is room. Um, they're going to use smaller trees along Broad Street because there is a transmission line that goes along that side of Broad Street. But otherwise, they're using large variety of trees and they'll either be planted in tree wells or in landscape strips. Um, our, let me go back to this. Our analysis was that this particular uh, proposal was a good location for high-density residential development. It's located along a growth corridor, which is Peters Creek Parkway and West 2nd Street. It's served by multiple transit routes. It's within the Growth Management Area 1, which is the city center, not located adjacent to any single-family residential um, uses. Um, the proposed development is a significant improvement to the urban streetscape at this critical location and it satisfies a previous condition to account for the loss of Watkins Street Park. We did have some concerns, or not some concerns, but we wanted to bring attention to future development in the master plan area. We believe that it should emphasize a mixture of uses and include some non-residential components and include a comprehensive parking plan that does not disperse so much required parking throughout downtown and neighborhoods. So we did uh, recommend approval of this proposed development some of the conditions that have changed since the time that you all received the staff report in the agenda book was the changing from the size of the parkland from 0.59 to 0.6 acres and then some rewording of the condition um, to require improvements in programming for the public park including a public park signage plan to be approved by the city of winston-salem and then there's another condition that involves the public access and perpetual maintenance agreement that is already existing, um, or I'm sorry, it would it, a new public access and perpetual maintenance agreement to, to for the 0.6 acre parkland. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Yeah, I've got a, a couple. Um, how many acres is the proposed Brookstown closing? That I don't know. Less than an acre. Yeah, I mean, it's probably 60 foot right away by a couple hundred linear feet. I would get, or maybe 300 at the most. I would say at the most, it'd probably be between a third and half an acre. Um, and again, that's just spitballing it. Do you have exact number? 0.34 acres. 0.34 acres. It, it, and and I'm very sensitive about you know public areas being given to private uh, private control, I guess. Um, is there any way that we could get the park expanded by that amount as well? 
uh, along the way or or have green space that would compensate for that 0.34 acres I mean I, I was trying to figure out and in if you would go back in your in your pictures that hadn't always been the place where we were going to put that park right correct um, the so where was it supposed to be before so in the existing master plan uh, the proposal was to include a more linear form park uh -huh. which would include land this is uh, West First Street right here where the mouse is yeah um, so this was a portion of the dedicated park land and then it would continue across West First Street down what was formerly the right-of-way for Green Street right and include I think all of this and all of this is that and is that part, when you put your area across uh, there? Is that still being held for park right there? Because I mean they're they're building a storage place on that, but I didn't know whether that back part was still being held for our park land. Yeah, the the storage facility is actually not on any of the um, ballpark property proper. It was on a separate piece of, uh, of that land. That was owned by the gas station. Right. That, yeah. was not, that was never part of this. I believe there was an effort at one point to get it as part of it, but it was not. So the land where the uh, storage facility is being built is not part of this development. And on and the it, map, where is, where is the storage facility on this? It's, it, is, it is right here where yeah. the right gas there. canopy is. Okay. The, at this point, as part of the master plan, that linear park is still part of the master plan, but the issue is that was done by an entity back in 2016-17 that has since walked away from the project. So you have an approved site plan, an approved master plan for uh, an apartment, um, excuse me, yeah, for apartment buildings, a, a hotel, about a 600 space deck maybe, maybe even more than that, a restaurant and a grocery store right. that has essentially vacated um, the project it's still in effect you know it's still there's a site plan in effect there's a master plan in effect if someone wanted to walk in here today and do that they would either have to i mean they could go in and do that exact plan today with that public dedication or they'd have to probably bring it back to you and to the elected body to change that with that being said since they've walked away would anticipate that the, that area that had the previous approval would have to go back through the process again because we don't think that that project will be constructed that way. So I guess what I'm saying is there is the potential to get some additional parkland, but the requirement that was part of the agreement for the ballpark and that was a condition of approval for the original ballpark back in 2007 specified 0.6 acres to make up for the land that that, that, that was lost. So there's no requirement beyond this 0.6 acres. So if this gets built and this gets dedicated to the city with the conditions of approval that they maintain it, this would satisfy the condition of approval and the development agreement from the original agreement back in 2007, if that makes sense. It doesn't preclude you and the county, uh, excuse me, the city council asking for more, but it yeah. would be outside of the scope of the agreement. So that little pocket in our existing master plan isn't necessarily safe correct okay. it's safe if they come through and develop exactly the way that it is mm -hmm. in that that's that was part of the original approval but what i would imagine is if that isn't if someone doesn't come in and take that up and develop it they would come back through the same process to do a site plan amendment or of that previous approval and at that point it would be on the table for negotiation yeah, and, and, and my main thing with this, I mean, we, we do have some other parks around and, and things like that, and it's not, um, I'm, I'm definitely one of those people that doesn't want to net lose any parkland because I, I think we have to keep pushing that if we're going to have a attractive city that people are going to come to. But, um, you know, the, the, my other recent experience was coming from an area of Denver where there's an extreme buildup of apartments block after block after block for um, for half mile to a mile and what's missing in that is the articulation uh, the walkability the green that's in there and so I, I think we need to keep these pockets like that and need to keep those as a priority as we continue to look at this master plan 
so that we will have that, those places for people to walk their dogs and, and, and everything else there. Uh, it, I, I'm, I'm also, of course, uh, wish we had more retail building as we had initially looked at in this area because it was such a prime area for that. But, uh, um, but I, would, I would really like to see that um, some kind of fair switch if we're going to uh, turn public area Brookstown into something, expanding that park by something or, or I, I do feel that having them maintain it is a is somewhat of a, a switch in there. That's nice. That's that's a good piece. But I I hate to lose another uh, you know close to a half acre in there to the city. Yeah. Um, parks and recreation planners oftentimes speak in terms of active recreation, passive recreation. Uh, more recently, we've seen great um, responses to greenways and walkways and the like. They, they are wonderful conduits for, for light exercise and connectivity. I would, I'm of a mindset that to close an underutilized public street in exchange for a 300-foot-long, 30-foot-wide landscaped walkway is almost an addition to the park rather than a subtraction. Yeah, but that, I mean, I, I guess we're a tenth of an acre difference yeah. in there is all. Though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'd just like to make another comment related to this. I agree that um, <clears throat> I'm concerned, along with Mr. Bryan, about that what is on the map is the social courtyard area. I, I really think the ballpark, since so much public um, involvement has been in this project, that we really need to make the ballpark usable to the public at large and not just usable to the private apartment dwellers. And so we need a good walkway, a good place for recreation. What we were told when we looked at the, this earlier version of the master plan was that this social courtyard could potentially be used for um, ev events where there were um, food trucks and things like that. I would love to see a space here by the ballparks that could be usable by the whole community. And so um, it's a concern to me to think that that may not come to be, but as we go forward with the plans um, post this development, I would like to you know, strongly encourage something like that in the future. And I was going to say, from a staff perspective, keep in mind, you know, as of today, the approved plan for the area uh, on the south side of First Street adjacent to the ballpark that does include that linear feature that you're talking about, there is an approved plan, there's an approved master plan that has that on there. Again, if they were to come in today, that would be they would have to do that. It may not necessarily be dedicated as public, but it would certainly be public space because you you know essential. That's the way you would get to and from the ballpark. It would connect to the uh, future um, multi-use path along um, Salem Parkway. Is that right? Salem Parkway, um, the Green Street pedestrian bridge connection. So again, you have all those ties there. If the developer were to come, in, you know, the future developer were to come in and want to amend that, I think. As a staff, we have heard kind of the concerns, and I think we would, uh, again, look to try to emulate that. It may not be exactly, but I think we would try to emulate that with anything else that would come in the door. And I did have another question about traffic. Um, and I see Mr. Fansler's here. Maybe he can <laughs> answer the question. Um, included in the staff report was um, a report on the Broad Street connector. And I just had some questions about how, whether the proposals in the Broad Street Connect, how that would impact this, this project. Would they impact it in any way? While, while Mr. Fans was coming up to address that, I would say that uh, that was a piece of information that we received that was put into the wrong folder and wasn't supposed to make it into your staff report. It was more for background information. But again, that doesn't, I mean, it is in your pocket. It is, it is public information, so go ahead and ask your questions. But it shouldn't have been in there, and that was an oversight on my well, part. I was, it was confused as to why it was in there. Yeah, it, it was put in the wrong folder. Okay. 
So I'm glad someone else asked. Yeah. <laughs> and Jeff Hansler was some DOT represented in this building. Um, <laughs> Not sure what was in the packet about the connector, but at this time the city's not pursuing that. Those, there were some alternatives um, presented at preliminary design from NCDOT, and that project is is uh, been pushed to the side. There's not there's no legs behind that. So right, I did see that in the report. But if there were like two build options in the in the report, mm -hmm. would either one of those be problematic? Should this project be approved? Hmm. Yeah, that was my question. Very much yeah. likely yeah. so. Um, I could say that with, with certainty, yeah. Those, those options would impact this parcel tremendously. So in other words, if this gets built, then the Broad Street connector may not be able to go forward. Is that what you're saying? Not under the scenarios that were in this room. There would have to be a change. Correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me follow up on that. So how are – you all are supposed to be about 10 years ahead of the rest of us in planning. So how, it's, how is Peters Creek going to get down Broad Street? You, well, Are they going to continue to take a left at the stoplight? How's Peters Creek going to get down? Yeah, when you come up Peters Creek mm -hmm. and you're and you're going by this apartment <coughs> complex right. and you're coming in, it, you don't have any plans to to flow that down Broad Street. I guess I'm not following you. We have dual left turns at the intersection. Of and that's the way it's planned to keep it. Well, no, I mean by and large, we're going to change dramatically um, this whole area with our downtown two-way conversion. Um, so that's a big element that has not been mentioned. You know, First and Second Street are planned to go two ways, um, and, and, and that's an element that will directly affect this entire circulation, um, both First Street and this parcel, uh, just you know, directly related to this, as well as Second Street, are both going to be two-way facilities. So those, uh, we are currently under design now, and we're moving forward with that direction. So circulation will, will change dramatically, because if you're on Peters Creek, you could essentially continue on toward Second Street, down Second Street into downtown, or you could hang a right on a First Street, hit Brookstown there, and go over towards that end of town, you know, the south end of Marshall Street, so on. So there's some there's some great circulation changes that are forthcoming. Uh, I want to be clear on that. Hmm. But can I just ask one other question? So not building the Broad Street connector, notwithstanding the fact that it's not in the funding pipeline, mm -hmm. but – <laughs> Say 20 years from now, are you anticipating significant traffic impacts from this proposal or not? From this proposal, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I sent I sent some questions, if I may. may. Maybe this is not the right time to show the two way. It may enhance some questions, but may I jump over here? So I'm gonna. I hope you guys can see that. It's kind of the subject parcel there and how, how things will are planned to change. You can see the two-way circulation on both First Street and Broad Street. And again, this is something that's planned. We are we have a preliminary, not preliminary plans, but we have a design plans already that we're in draft review now, and we're working to finalize those for, for starting construction next year probably. So this is imminent. All right, there any other questions for staff? I've got one incredibly small detail question, right. if I could beg your time. Referencing the proposed, I think, three-foot-wide uh, concrete median uh, on – on on behalf of a nice natural environment as possible, could that be considered uh, to be allowed to be a landscape median in lieu of all concrete? So not in this and not in this application because of the size parameters that that would require. Um, you would need a much larger uh, island to accommodate vegetation, and there's just not going to be room. It's going to push the road and, and lane shifts, and, and not comfortable pursuing that at this time. So three foot is going to be tight as it is. But, and that's designed for a right-in, right-out function when we go to two-way conversion. However, um, for it to be planted, it would have to be much, much larger. Jeff, I've seen some situations that are two and three feet wide in other communities that are actually that's 
colorized concrete. I don't know if that's something we would ever pursue, but uh, it's kind of a maintenance issue. It does help to kind of tone it down from just a white concrete, but I don't know if that would be something that it would be a greater maintenance issue, but it would probably be more attractive because it is too, too narrow for vegetation. I'm sure it will be more attractive. Again, we would have concerns from a, a long-term maintenance of that and and especially not knowing what material we may have and the application of how that ma is ma maintained. So I can't speak to that too, too deeply, but. All right, any other questions? So no one has signed up. Is anyone here opposed to this recommendation? Seeing no one, I declare the public hearing closed. Well, if there are, it's actually, we're on consent agenda, so yeah, the public hearing went open, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I started talking. Then, oh, that's right. Yeah, I'm yeah, ready right. for a motion. I move that the planning board recommend uh, approval and that the planning board find that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Actually, because it's a final development plan, we don't need we don't need a uh, area plan uh, concurrence. If I could get clarification, is that with the amended condition? With the amended conditions. Okay. A second. So the zoning doesn't happen unless those conditions are satisfied by elected body. Unless the there are two agreements at least that have to take place. Correct. Okay. I mean, it's it would be part of the development process. Yeah. Okay. There's a previous motion on the floor by Mr. Lamb, seconded by Mr. Grubbs. Any conversation? All those in favor? Opposed the same sign? Passes unanimously. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, the next item on the consent agenda is item B3, case W3419. This is a site plan amendment for property zoned general business special use. 1.9 acre site at the southwest corner of Union Cross Road and Solomon Drive. Um, this is a photo taken from Solomon Drive. The subject property is straight across. It's on the corner there. And then this is another photo looking west along Solomon Drive. The subject property is to the left. This is the proposed uh, site plan. Solomon Drive is along the top or the north of the site. This is Pecan Lane along the western side of the site. And then this is Union Cross Road along the eastern portion of the site. It is a convenience store. Um, this kind of speckled pattern you see is concrete, but I think it will be developed the canopy. There's a car wash down here in the southern portion of the site. They're showing a landscape berm along Solomon Drive and an enhanced street yard along Union Cross Road. These are the elevations that the uh, developer submitted. Staff had some concerns about what it would look like from across Pecan Lane this side of Pecan Lane is proposed to be, or is being developed um, as multifamily residential. And so these are the elevations that the applicant submitted. This elevation here and along this side is the one that's gonna face um, Pecan Lane and on the other side of the street will be those multifamily apartments. Staff recommends approval of this amendment. Thank you, Mr. Corley. Are there any questions for Mr. Corley? Yes, I had a question. All right. Uh, Mr. Corley. Um, did you work out the positioning of the dumpster? Or is that still up in the air? I think it said in the staff report that you didn't want it across the street from the houses and you didn't want it close to where the apartments were gonna be. Yes, that, that was not our preference. The revised plan does show the dumpster still in that location. Um, but if you look closely at the site plan, there's actually three rows of landscaping around that. There's a row of shrubs, evergreen shrubs, right around the dumpster. Uh, then there's Can you show us where yeah. the dumpster is? Yeah, so this is the dumpster where my cursor is. This is the dumpster enclosure. So what Gary is talking about is the required street yard along Pecan Lane, which will partially screen the dumpster. In addition to that, they've got the landscape berm that I mentioned on Solomon Drive. But the developer is also showing some vegetation along the outside of the enclosure, which will be brick to match the building. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of screening in that corner of the site. It just looked like it was kind of problematic for them to relocate it as much as we wanted that to happen. So hopefully it will be tucked away in there and blend in fairly well. And I don't then, know if that um, answers your question or not. The other question had to do with the cross access driveway easement. Is there such, is that on here? This is, is it right that's here. That's it, okay. Mm -hmm. 
I wasn't sure if that was the vacuum center or not. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, it looks like they've got their vacuums kind of off to the side of the car wash. Um, but this is the this is the access to the southern portion of the of the property. And I guess what you're seeing is a label with an arrow that points yeah, to the back. <coughs> All right, thank you. Great question. Hey, Mr. Corley, you, have, you haven't had any uh, conversations or concerns from the developer of the multifamily on the other side because that's, that's multi-story too, isn't it? Yes. Over there. So they're not, they don't have any concerns about any of this happening across the street? We've not heard any concerns with no. them from them regarding this particular development. You still feel it's going to be, even if you're on the third floor looking down on the dumpster and hearing the vacuums, they don't have any problem with that, huh? We haven't heard any concerns from them. Yeah. He's been working closely. There, you know, this is one of those projects that actually does not have a, what I would call, formal developer. It was something that was approved. There were a lot of different entities. You had Cracker Barrel coming in. You have the, the property that Quality Oil owns. You have uh, the developer of the apartment complex that, uh, you know, is, is building that. He's actually kind of acted as more as, uh, of the de facto developer on the construction of Pecan Lane. So he's been involved with um, Quality Oil on this site. So not only is, have we not heard from him, I mean, I would, I would say by not hearing anything, I mean, he's actively involved in this project, and he hasn't come out to speak against it. So or voiced any concerns. Any further questions for staff? All right, is anyone prepared to make a motion or further discussion? I move approval. Second. I move that the planning board recommend approval. Uh, w, uh, w uh, 3419. 3419. <laughs> Keep feeding me, Chris. No <laughs> <laughs> and, and that the planning board find that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Thank you. Motion by Mr. Lamb. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Stillman. All those in favor? Oppose the same sign, and we had one who had to recuse himself, Mr. Groves. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The next is item on the consent agenda is item C1, which is a 26-lot subdivision by name Piccadilly Ponds. Um, it's 8.15 acres. Here is the site plan of the proposed subdivision. Um, this subdivision meets UDO requirements, and staff recommends that you approve this subdivision. Uh, move approval. From Mr. Lamb, second by Mr. Grubbs. All those in favor, sign of aye. Aye. Opposed the same. So that's unanimous. And Mr. Chairman, the final item on the consent agenda is item D1, which is a, another 26 lot subdivision, but this one is a planned residential development by the name of Stone Ridge. It's 27.25 acres off on the west side of Lassiter Road. This PRD also meets UDO requirements, and staff recommends that you approve this subdivision. Move approval. Uh, Motion by Mr. Lamb, second by Ms. Mr. Bryant. All those in favor? Oppose the same sign. All right, that is unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Corey. I think we have staff report now. Yes, sir. Um, first of all, uh, thank you for Councilmember McIntosh and Councilmember Scipio for being with us today. Good to see you. Um, I would like to um, introduce our newest employee, uh, Mr. Samuel Hunter. Uh, he's a High Point native. Uh, he's an ECU grad, which I know will please Aaron and please Mr. Stillman here. Um, he is going to be Smith. on. She's yeah. got oh. masters. Oh, okay. I don't think I realized that. Okay. Uh, he is going to be working on our land use administration team. Uh, he will be. Um, on the counter a lot. He'll also be doing reviewing plats and subdivisions, and uh, he'll have the occasional zoning case for kind of bringing him up to speed. So welcome, welcome him aboard when you get the opportunity. Uh, also have a bit of congratulatory announcement if you look at it one way and some sadness if you look at it others. We have two pending retirements, one of which is in the room today. Um, both Margaret Bissett and Lynn Rusher are going to be retiring uh, effective December 1st. Uh, year? They have, uh, of this year, unfortunately, <laughs> this year, unfortunately, they have a combined over 63 years of experience in our department. Both of them have over 30 years here. 
um, of service to the citizens of West Amherst County and the planning board. So when you get an opportunity, wish them well as well. Uh, the final kudos that I'll give is, and this is a project that I know that uh, one of our council members championed hard who's in here. So uh, we had the Unistation uh, grand opening this past weekend. I unfortunately wasn't able to be there for because of sports activities with my kids. But it's my understanding it was a wonderful, wonderful event. Uh, kudos to everyone that was involved, especially Michelle uh, McCullough on our staff, Heather Bratlin on our staff. But it was a total team effort, not only of our department, but m multiple departments to pull that off. If you haven't had the opportunity to go look at it, it's, it's incredible. We had a tour of it probably um, six weeks to two months ago, and you know, it was, it's just an incredible, incredible uh, restoration. So, sure. Yeah. Oh, Haynes Park, Haynes Park. <laughs> Now that that's that's great, and we didn't have as much to do with that one, but so big kudos to that too. <laughs> um, you have, I believe, you either have at your place or you've received in the past. We have the uh, historic historic marker unveiling for the Liberia and Salem, uh, the partnership there. That's on the twenty um, first of this month at ten a.m. Um, you also have at your place a few other things. You have our annual report. <laughs> Uh, that you can read at your leisure that kind of highlights uh, the important things for the year. You've got a thing, Pints of Politics, that will be happening um, at Footnote Coffee and Cocktails uh, in October. Um, there's also the Airport and Whitaker Park Plan kickoff meeting on October 7th uh, at 6 p.m. Uh, that's the uh, special air... I, yes, I can't read my writing. The 17th of October at 6 p.m., and that is to kick off our special area plan for the uh, airport and Whitaker Park area. The last two things I'll go into, I'll give just a brief overview of work session for September 26th, and then I'll turn it over uh, to uh, Desmond, who will highlight um, your agenda for October, but I believe it's going to be a full slate. On work session on the 26th, uh, we have UDO 291, which is um, will be a briefing item on the UDO Clear Code Amendment. I believe you've we've obviously been dealing with that a lot over the last 18 months. The ordinance is complete. Uh, this is going to be a one-for-one -one swap out uh, for adoption of UDO Clear Code to replace uh, our existing UDO with an effective date of uh, January 1 of 2020. It would come to you for again at work session and you'll have a public hearing on it in October and then it will move on to the elected bodies in November and December depending on how we get it on their calendars Hope, like I said hopefully with uh, being adopted with an effective date of January 1 also at that meeting you'll be briefed on the parks and recreation master plan uh, update and again that'll be a briefing item that will also be on your public hearing um, schedule for October is my understanding and then finally, um, as far as key items, Pat Ivey with NCDOT will be there to provide a project update, including drone footage uh, for a lot of the projects that are underway under construction in Forsyth County. And with that, I'll turn it over to Desmond, whenever Gary gets finished talking to him, who will go over the uh, caseload for October. Um, as Chris, excuse me, whoa. As Chris mentioned, um, you'll have the UDO Clear Code text amendment uh, public hearing next month and then a public hearing for the Parks and Greenway Master Plan. Um, in addition to that, there are six cases to be heard next month. Um, four of them are site plans, and then two are limited use zoning cases. So it should be very interesting. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. And that's all I have for staff report. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Is it good to do all right, if we have a, a motion to adjourn, and I go heels, I'm going to get that under the <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> On record. I'm not going to say anything about Wake Forest right now. Uh, all right, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.